Thanks, Joe. I appreciate you joining me today. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. I have to say, you're probably the perfect person to talk to about this saving. And just, it's <laughs> always one of the goals, right? Like every time we start off Absolutely. a year, I keep hearing like three major goals. One of them is like paying off a debt and then they want to save for a particular goal. And then others, you know, of course, want to earn more money. But you are like my go-to guy for savings because I think last time we had you on, you had a savings hack and then you had another hack on top of that. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm ready to learn from you again. So thanks for coming back on. Awesome. No, I'm glad to be here. And it's always great to, uh, I love talking about saving money. So it's yeah. a perfect spot for us. Yeah. And what I love about Coastal's mission about banking better is that your money is really going towards what matters to you, whether it's people, the projects that are important. And so with savings, that's one of the big things. What are you saving up for? So I kind of want to start off with that. For 2020, what are some things that you and your wife are saving up for? So uh, the big thing right now is I've been saving for a new car. And I started doing that once I paid off the, the one I'm currently driving. I had yeah. My plan is to actually purchase a new one in 2021. Um, mm. But I'm actually pretty happy with what I'm driving right now. And I might try to stretch that out a couple extra years. So, um, but I'll still continue to save toward that. Um, also travel. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'd really like to, I'm on a mission to finish visiting all 50 states. So I'd like oh, to get in a couple, nice. couple trips this year to maybe knock out a few more. Um, and maybe do an international trip. Oh my goodness. So you have some really fun goals. And actually we have one goal that's aligned with you, but for 2020, we are buying a car for my husband. So we've been saving up for that. And I think people um, don't appreciate like saving up ahead just gives you so much buying power uh, with a car, whether it's a down payment or if you're trying to buy a car with cash. Now for you, do you save up and try to buy cash or are you saving up for a significant uh, down payment. How do you do that? Uh, the goal would be to pay cash. Um, mm -hmm. But if it's a significant down payment and a small loan, I'd, I'd be happy with that as well. Gotcha. So when we talk about saving, there's so many different ways to do it. Um, some people like to do it like a percentage off the top. They're going to do X amount in the savings account. Others look at a certain amount per savings. I'm curious, how exactly are you planning um, on saving in 2020? What's your method? So in practice, it's always like, a, mm -hmm. for me, it's a set dollar amount per pay period. Um, but I'm aiming toward a percentage. Mm -hmm. So um, like my goal, my goal is to actually save 50% of my income. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah, you know, so that's that's what I'm shooting for. This year I actually did 43. Um, percent mm -hmm. I was on pace, and then I had some expenses tied to the rental property that I needed to. Uh, it's it's a good investment, but had mm -hmm. to put the money back into that. Yeah, of course, obviously. Um, one of the things I love about Coastal is like how you can automate it. Um, how, do you take advantage of that, like with the savings, or do you manually like move the money to the account? How does that work for you? So for me, I automate mm -hmm. nearly everything mm -hmm. um, on payday, you know, paycheck comes and automatically deducts for 401k and mm -hmm. health savings account. So I try to max out both of those every year. Um, and then that money gets deposited into a checking account, but I've got a automatic transfer set up. So on payday every two weeks, yeah. there's a set, there's a set dollar amount that will automatically move over into the money market account for some, you know, shorter term savings. Um, where the manual comes in is mm -hmm. you know, twice a month, I'll actually stop and look at all my accounts. And if there's excess money in my checking account that I know mm -hmm. I'm not going to need, I'll move that over to a money market account. Yeah. Uh, I think we've talked about in the past, I like to kind of track my money market uh, in, in buckets for yeah. individual goals. But if I'm getting a little heavy in that account, uh, mm -hmm. I'll move some of that to an investment account. And then I also have automatic withdrawals that come out twice mm -hmm. a month that go into an IRA. So once I set those up, I just kind of let them run for the year and then check in, you know, on balances a couple times a month to see if I do need to move anything. But the, the overall mechanics of it is highly automated. Yeah. I found that it's really helpful for us. We're busy. We have two young kids. So if I can make anything easier, especially when it comes to managing money, automation is the way to go. But since you're married, I kind of want to talk about this. How do you decide how much you're going to save for the next year. Is this something like formally or you're saying, you know, we did pretty well before. Let's see if we can notch it up a bit. How do you guys talk about that? 
I've been comfortable with, you know, that trying to aim for that 50% goal. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, I just track it every month and see what, you know, where the progress is towards that. It's easy to get ahead earlier in the year when things like, yeah. you know, tax returns come in, um, you know, maybe bonuses or some other things, and then try to just keep it at that level for the remainder of the year. Um, but I do budget out, you know, what each check's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy if, if, 50, if I can stay close mm -hmm. to 50% for yeah. an extended period of time, yeah, I know that'll be, that'll be good for the long run. Yeah. Fantastic. That's awesome. I know a lot of couples are saying, you know what, this year we're going to do a better job about saving. But of course you have to somehow find the money within your budget right now. So are there any low hanging fruits of expenses that couples maybe should look out for in their budget so they can start saving? The easy one's food. I have found, particularly in my case, mm -hmm. but I know it's true for a lot of people, is dining out is a mm -hmm. huge expense uh, and it will eat up a lot of you, even your discretionary spending. Yeah. So if you've got, you know, you're just, you're spending money that you're giving yourself permission to spend every week or every month, it's really easy to eat up into that literally going out to eat. Um, so I would say, you know, take a look at what you're spending there. If you, you know, delay going out to eat or, or forego going out to eat and decide to cook at home a couple extra times a week, maybe take some mm -hmm. leftovers for lunch. I know when I do that, I find suddenly I've got all this extra money and I don't really you know, know where it came from. And it's because I didn't go spend it out at restaurants. Um, but if you are going out to eat too, there's other things you can do. Maybe, you know, go out to lunch instead of going out to dinner yeah. where you get the same food for usually a lower bill um, or even just spend a little less while you're there. Maybe have one less drink than you had planned on or skip dessert, skip the appetizer. So you're still getting the experience of going out, but mm -hmm. the bill's a little bit smaller. And if you repeat that over time, suddenly, you know, you find you'll have a little bit extra and you can put that aside in, into your savings. Yeah, absolutely. I will say it's hard in Raleigh in this area. There's so many good restaurants, but of course, having a budget doesn't mean you completely cut it out, but just make sure it's a priority of saving. And then you have set aside some money for those, you know, special nights out. Well, thanks so much, Joe. I appreciate you coming over, sharing your tips on saving more. And of course, you know, we're partnering up with you this season at Coastal. What are some ways that people can um, check out Coastal and maybe some accounts they might want to look into? So I always tell people to go mm -hmm. and visit our website. It's coastal24.com. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're, if you're looking for a great checking account, our Go Green Checking is, is a great product. Uh, our website's really organized in a great way too that you know, we look at what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish this year? Mm -hmm. And we'll try to match you up with products and services that are right for you. You know, we're all about helping people along on their financial journey. We know that everybody's in a different place in their life, but there's always that next step. And we try to work with each individual member to try to get them to that next step on their journey. Yeah, fantastic. So guys, I partnering up with Coastal, but we are also members of Coastal and we've been happy with them, been using them for years. And I actually had my mom sign up for Coastal. She's recently moved into the area. So if you want to learn more, I'm going to have the information in the show notes below uh, with the link. So I hope you have a wonderful week and thank you again, Joe, for coming on. Awesome. Thanks for having me.